Aha, there we go, nice. All right, cool, it's working. Hello, everyone, welcome. I'm glad you guys could all join us for the SBR BTCC Season 11, Round 10, 11, and 12 here at the Blue Moon Speedway. What is it, Blue Moon Bay Speedway? Infield uh, A, sorry, I was reading the chat there. Now it appears Sean might not be able to make it tonight. If he ends up making it, uh, we can get him in later. But if not, no worries. Don't know what all those initials meant after that. But yeah, three more whatever is all good. But yeah, here we are. This is round 11 here at the uh, Blue Moon Infield, which is a fantastic track for anyone who somehow has managed to not drive this track at some point in time. It has a lot of... Uh, a lot of reminiscence of an oval. It's a lot like the hash brown. You come through this infield section instead of just going in a straight line, but I mean, the infield section is just about as close to a straight line as you can get. There's like maybe a braking zone and then there's a hairpin uh, that we see Dentair down here coming into right here. It's about one of the only little tricky sections is through this little back area, but it's really just these two turns. And then you've got the uh, hardest section which is what he'll be coming up to in a section which is really if you hit it right you just gain so much speed because you're just at top end speed the f entire length of this back straight but if you run wide and catch the wall I mean that just ruins not only the lap you're on if you're in qualifying but all of the lap coming up as well just because you won't be at the same top speed so it is going to be very interesting to kind of see everybody as they uh filter their way through with two rounds remaining uh we've already kind of got our standings lining up decently it's separated a little bit from uh last week not so much at the top but we do have a little bit after about fifth separating down a little bit but currently we've got piper who we're looking at right now sitting in first place with 121 points only three points behind him is tomkinson who i'm not going to switch to because i can't see him in the top eight so he's probably just sitting in the pits right now in third is Edwards, who has changed his name. Currently the fastest lap that I have seen. Doesn't mean it's the fastest lap out there as I joined a little bit later, but Edwards currently sitting in 10th with the new username, SMM Vulcan, as he's clearly joined a group with SMM that, like we all know, adds time to your uh, overall lap time, so, or reduces time on your overall lap time. So he's currently sitting in third at 110 so our top three are within 11 points of each other the top two within three so there's gonna be a lot of battling on the podium but then we have graham and adams both at 104 and fourth and fifth place so they're just six points outside the podium so quite sure we're gonna want to see graham and adams who we see right here in the mazda trying to find their way onto the podium with just a couple rounds to go sean cole sitting in seventh with 80 points who may not be with us he's about 50 50 i heard as he, whether he'd be able to make it, so maybe that's who Denter is filling in for. I was told all this stuff. I should know exactly who everyone's filling in for. Believe it or not, I have no idea. So we'll just probably pretend, as I feel like he's the only substitute that I see in. So, oh, no, we've also got Myers who sub again for someone. So 50-50. But yeah, so we do have uh, Sean Cole sitting in seventh with 80 points. But if he's unable to score any points this round, that means both Clements and Austin in 8th and ninth on 73 points looking to wait, make their way up the leaderboard, trying to maybe find a way to get inside that battle for the top five. And then rounding out the top ten is Walsh with 64. And Thomas has been having some really good races, so it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of separate from Myers, who's only, uh, what is that, 12 points back in 11th. So Myers is driving for himself, so that answered that question for me. Then we got Sharp with 36, so a decent back in 12th, but he's got 16 on Heron and 13th at 20. And then we do have Ross making waves right here, trying to get off the bottom. He was just kind of on the bottom by a decent bit, but now he's five points back of Heron. So it will be interesting to see if he can find a way to get from 14th into 13th as well. As qualifying is getting ready to go, our team leaderboards are a little separated at the top. Not too bad, though, as Team Parker Racing is at 214 in first. Laser Tools Racing at 186 in second. So a decent bit back, but can make it up in a race. BTC in third with 185, so just one point back of second. Then 15 points back of BTC is Power something, I can't read, Power Maxed at 170 points. Fifth is West Surrey Racing at 162 points. And then both Motor Base Performance and Accelerative had quite a bit of issues uh, with their rosters and finishing positions. They're respectively in sixth and seventh, uh, both pretty far back from the top five, pretty far back from each other at 117 and 88 points. So 
maybe they can get some races going or they can find a way to get off the bottom but it really is currently the top five all have a shot uh into the top three for sure anything could happen there Fifth, sixth and seventh are gonna have to step up if they want to try to battle for anything other than sixth and seventh as they have fallen quite a bit off the pace but it looks like what did that message say because that may have said please no overtaking on the apron that should uh go without saying pass on the track gotta race on the track guys that's what it's there for they'll put little lines and stuff But we are going to get this qualifying underway, which is like a five-minute qualifier. It's a pretty short lap, just over a minute, so be able to get three or four solid laps in. Oh, I want to write down who's on mediums, because I'm ready for that this time. So let's go through here and see who's starting on the mediums. We do have Austin not getting out. I thought he was getting out first. He is in P1, but that'll change in a second. On softs, we've got Rob Adams currently on his mediums, so... Rob's using his mediums. We've got Tomkinson going to go ahead and get his mediums. So we got some of the people in the top five already starting to uh, put out some mediums. We've got is that Graham running his mediums as well. Wait, is that great? Yeah, okay. I'm, this SMM is going to get me confused. we got Liam going on the mediums as well. Looking at a lot of mediums here. McEwen's on the mediums. We got Ash on the Super Soft, so battling. We've already looked at Graham, right? We got Piper on the Super Softs as well. Thomas is rocking the mediums. Everyone's flip-flopping. It's messing my whole medium search up. We've got a lot of people still sitting in the pits, which makes me wonder, are there a lot of... Pit glitch. Back out. Cancel entry. I believe... We got most of the medium tires written down, so that's good to know. We'll get the rest of them down, so we'll actually be able to keep track of how the races are going. But it looks like uh, we're going to reset or something. Usually, uh, when we get a pit glitch, that one person can just unenter himself immediately, re-enter himself back in and get out of the pits. And yeah, it adds like 30 seconds, depending on how quick they can do all that. But usually that'll fix an immediate pit glitch. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, sometimes you're just permit stuck. But So we could always try that as well. As we see, it looks like... Uh, not quite getting restarted just yet. You can also, another trick is to actually exit out of the lobby and clear your temporary game files in your options. Because uh, sometimes if those get all too full, it'll cause some issues getting in and out of pits. So that's helpful for both hosts and drivers who like to do pretty often. But once we get the lobbies figured out, we will get underway. So we do have a lot of battling going on, it appears. Oh, we can start looking at the tires as well. So we do have Graham and Rob on the mediums. We got Tompkinson, and it looks like Clements and Thomas are going to go on mediums as well. Got Piper on the super softs. More people jumping in. Who do we not have written down? I think we got everyone, maybe. One, two, three, four, five. We got six mediums. One, two, three, four five six mediums perfect but yeah so thank you guys for joining we'll get underway as soon as we can ash saying good evening good evening to you as well have fun out there <clears throat> but yeah this will get all underway once we get this connection issue going which i mean anyone who's ever participated in any gt sport racing will know that the first attempt is always almost just a test start just to see whose connection fails then you spend about 10, 15 minutes trying to fix their connection. Most of the time it works out and everything goes. Sometimes it breaks everything and the whole server crashes. So, you know, you just never really know where you sit. I am quite jealous of this track. We don't race it in the league. I'm personally in that often. It is a fantastically fun. Usually leads to a lot of close battling just because it's not, it looks like you'd be able to go side by side a lot, which you can. But as long as you drive somewhat defensively, it's just not a lot of overtaking. You have this hairpin here, 
and you kind of have the next little hairpin area, the double apex, which is just, I mean, I think this is just such a fun corner. When you hit it right, it just flows so well. And when you hit it wrong, when someone hits it wrong and they just start drifting in front of you, I mean, you just have the full right to just abuse them. There's nothing they can do about it. It's so fun. Because then this is a one lane. Like, there's just no reason to try to go side by side. If you go side by side on the outside, you're hitting the wall for sure. So, like, if someone has the inside on, you just kind of got to back out. I, I feel like more often than not, and then just depending on how many people can keep it together, like this straight right here. God, this is the worst view ever. Is there a better view? This variable chain, we're doing variable for now then. That was terrible. That would be horrible in the race if cars were side by side and it was that close. We may have to mess with the camera settings on this one. That was real close. These are all real close. Oh well. On the super softs, we have Clements on the mediums, Thomas on the mediums, Denter on the softs, Liam on the mediums, yeah, so, got Schaller on Scholler, super softs, Thompson mediums, so it looks like we're going to have about six people on mediums in the first race, so that means there's only up to, what, eight people who could do it on the second race, but probably at least not. So we'll probably have, like, two or three people in mediums on the final race as well. It doesn't look like it's going to be a, just half of them on mediums one race, half the other race. Looks like we have a couple of teams who might be running the super softs together. As we are just waiting for Ross to join back in. As he had a little connection pit glitch there, so I'm sure he's clearing his memory, restarting his PlayStation, all that stuff. So I don't like this camera angle either, though. So ooh, whole lobby restart. All right. gotten this account up to level 16. Impressive. Well, we can just hang out here and stare at an empty screen for a minute. As the lobby's getting reset so that we can get in here. And I'm assuming as soon as the lobby resets, we'll probably just go full go. Qualifying on the way. Everyone will cross our fingers and pray for uh, Ross to uh, get away. And if he gets away, then good to go but if not oh wow my phone's echoing there we go and if not i think yeah they'll probably just continue going and i'm not sure if they put him at the back if you just take a no qualifying and hope not to be stuck on the uh, field or what happens there but we'll hit that when we get there as the lobby is back up so that clean Ferrari. Too bad there's no Ferraris in the BTCC. Be nice to see it pushing people around. Probably be a boss. Alright. As we are almost underway, there we go. Well, we do see Brian was able to get back in, so that's good to see. It's a good start. Being able to see the lobby always helps out to begin with. As we see everyone joining back in as quick as possible. That's sometimes what even crashes the servers as well. It's pretty hilarious how everyone will reshut the lobby down because it's not for working for one person. And then everyone joining the server at the exact same time will re-crash it again. And it's just a folly of errors. Hopefully stuff that they get fixed when GT7 comes out. But it does look like they're taking a lot of stuff from GT Sports. So I don't know how much work is going to be done on their private lobby system. Hopefully enough. Probably none. And it does look like some people are out practicing. So we can kind of watch Myers as he kind of... Oh yeah, let's change that camera because it... I don't think either one of these cameras do that great a job on this track. We need a uh, helicopter angle to be looking down from above. It'd be so much better. But we always see a lot of tight action side by side with these close battles. Or with these close angles. There will be close battles. It 
see Rob jumping out. Anyone make? Mm -hmm. I hope no one made any uh, tire changes because I wrote that in pen. It looks like we're staying the same. Yeah, I don't see any changes. So, yeah, Piper and Edwards are in the top three currently and they're both starting on the super soft so they both want to try to get away and continue to go but Tomkinson a little bit confidence is currently sitting second three points about back of Piper and he's actually going to allow him to qualify faster than him because he's going to qualify on the mediums and get them out of the way right at the start so a little separation of uh, strategy right off the bat as it looks like uh everyone's trying to get out as fast as they can most everyone like why won't it just let me go and I think this is a track where, just because of how long that back straight is and how short the lap is, you're going to see differences in lap times that aren't that different to begin with, probably. So if you can get a good run and find a good slipstream partner who can run a lap and just pull you down that straight so you can get all that extra top speed, I mean, it might make up a tenth, tenth and a half on your time. And when everyone's running within a tenth of each other anyways, usually might be worth it to try to find someone to slip on but it's just risky because you can't really pass in a qualifying you kind of and if they make a mistake that's not a huge mistake but it costs them two tenths it costs you two tenths as well because you can't do anything about it so it'll be interesting to see how much they separate versus how close they stay because like right here rossi little close like you want to i i would want to be about seven tenths back on someone six tenths back on someone I think that would be about perfect because then they could actually like pull you enough without you having to worry about overtaking them because you would never actually close the gap up in time. Maybe like a half a second gap. But if you're like right on them, you might actually have to start to lift. As we see like Myers all over the back. So like he might actually end up racing Clements or just having to like break early. And that can just cost you those little bit of tents. So we'll see exactly where they end up as Liam just kind of checked out and he's going to do his own lap. And we've got Austin doing the same, the reverse of that, of just getting away from everyone and doing it from the back of the pack. So Liam's first lap's not looking great as he took a very alternate route through there. So that'll cost him a lot of time. As we see Myers running wide as well, so they both are going to kind of need another lap. Everyone else kind of keeping it together. Myers kind of keeping it in there too, so maybe he didn't lose as much time. Liam looked like he got sideways on his, so I think he probably did. I think the best time I've seen so far is about a 110, so we'll see where they start to come around at. As they do have some slipstream buddies, so some people are going to really benefit from slipstream while some people are kind of getting uh, in some weird spots. But Liam will put down the first lap here. Anything in the 110s is pretty good. It's going to be in the 112s. That's, oh wow, this isn't going to be great. So we've seen 110s. It's probably with slip though, maybe uh, low fuel. Graham with the 11. Seeing 12s, 13s. 11 there from Scholler into first. He's sitting on pole for a second. That's got to feel nice. But then Piper on the Super Soft jumping him. Denter jumping him as well. So very interesting as we see it looks like Schaller's pulling off saying his lap's good enough. He's good enough to beat the mediums, doesn't need to do anything else. Tomkinson, though, on the mediums is actually faster than him, so might want to find a way to get another lap in. Still enough time to get around, so he might just be getting away from everyone. He didn't like where he was. Super congested, super battle. So that makes sense. You can see Piper just outside of Thomas's range. Thomas, not quite in the range of anyone to draft as Ash is a little bit in front of him. Ash is just probably a little bit too far back of Myers as well, but Myers is sitting in a good spot. If they're on a hot lap here, this will definitely add some time to his or subtract some time from his lap as he's getting a slip almost the whole way down. I would have followed. I mean, I guess he's actually getting the actual like whip there, so ended up going better. Four tenths better than he did, but it looks like a lot of people are throwing up some better laps as well as we see Liam. McEwen's chilling on the mediums running in the 12, so I guess I didn't even think about that when he was going around. He wasn't on super soft, so 12 is actually good. He's actually uh, not in the lead of the mediums, as we do see uh, quite a bit of medium drivers with a better time. 12 not that great since uh, Tompkinson's got it down to 11.6. 
But there are quite, it seems like there's a lot of super soft tires that are kind of trapped in this medium group right now. And I think it's because they didn't do a good job of separating during qualifying. And we saw people on super softs behind people on mediums. And so they just kind of got dragged around to medium laps. And now that the pressure's on, if you're not 16 seconds from the line, you are not getting another lap. And all these super softs that are still back here are not going to get another lap, it doesn't look like. So there are quite a bit of mediums who are actually getting ahead of a lot of the super softs. So this is going to lead to, like, there's, yeah, this is going to lead to mayhem. Ash is in the back with some super softs without getting a solid time in yet. Thomas is on the mediums, mediums. We've got Myers on the super softs. So this could lead to a lot of battling in this uh, medium pack back here in their races. We see Tomkinson go even quicker. Did he even move up another position? Liam right on him. So Liam figured his stuff out and got himself into the 11s. Look at that. That feels good. When you run a horrible lap and then a terrible lap and then you get it back together, that is a good feeling. So I'm sure he's like whew, relieved. <laughs> I've been there. Because you've been there where you can't get together. You're just like, Jesus, I was so close and I just couldn't do it. Feels good to finally hit it for sure. As Tomkinson was just kind of like consistency. So can't be inconsistent in the race. He ran the same lap every single time. We also see here on the Super Softs, 11-5, 11-1, 11-1, 1 and then a 10-6 here. Didn't even pay attention. Edwards coming out on the Super Softs and really just showing the pace, taking the pole. So that he's 11 points back of Piper. They're running the same strategy of at least being on the Super Softs the first race. And to start it, he said, yeah, I got you this race. I'm coming up that leaderboard. Tompkinson's going to lose down to him anyways. He's on the mediums. Their strategies are different. They'll come together when they finally run Super Softs together, whether it's in the second race or the third race, whether Tompkinson's going mediums at the end or in the middle. Um, or, I mean, not Tompkinson, Graham, Edwards, whichever one he is. Whichever SMME is, but we're done with the qualifying. We're underway. We're ready for this race to get started. It is time to see. So we got, Gr not Graham, the other one. Edwards in first, Piper in second, Austin in third, Dinter in fourth, Schaller, Scholler in fifth, Tompkinson and Liam in sixth. And that's the top two mediums right there, I believe. So mediums are starting 6th and 7th with quite a bit of softs behind them. As I think Graham also is going to be on those mediums. He is. So it's really about get, trying to like keep the super softs from really battling them as they try to get away. But off to go. Let's see. Does anyone try to get crazy into the first corner? They're kind of just lining up a little bit. It's not really a long enough run. No one really has enough power. Austin kind of getting flirty on the inside here, though. He's going to take third and move on through. We see Shower getting pressured everywhere, but luckily for him, it's the mediums. We do see Liam going up the inside and getting by Tompkinson. Is Liam going to try to make some moves on the super soft drivers? As we see Piper getting way wide there. I mean, at this point, you know that super soft's right in front of you. They should be able to get away from you. You're kind of just needing to battle Tompkinson. Tompkinson looking to take sixth back, though. He comes on through. Oh, there is the, there's Graham. He's looking to come on through, but it's going to put him on the outside. Liam going to come back through. These medium drivers all over each other right now. The super softs are starting to line up a little bit, it looks like. No one going too wide. Liam will take it too wide through the insane corner. I don't know how you didn't hit the wall there, Tompkinson, going too wide through there, but like props. As they are going to go rolling start formation down the start straight finish here. As though they're trying to go three wide. Liam says, nah, uh -uh, I'm here. Graham doesn't care that he's there. He just pushes his car through there. He says, it doesn't matter if my car still goes left. Trying on the outside. It can be done here. You can still maintain a lot of speed. But you, you, Liam's just, yeah, he's running into Myers who just didn't quite have the same go. So... This would be one of those weird situations. If you're on mediums, which are quicker than the person on super softs ahead of you, but they can battle you, you just don't want to get stuck behind them. You want to make sure that you're still keeping up with the other mediums people because they could start separating if he starts to slow you down. So we do see him go a little defensive into this hairpin. It's an interesting line. I don't think he could have made the move. It actually opens the door for Rob. And Rob Adams makes the move up the inside. So Rob's trying to hunt his way through the mediums pack. We see Tompkinson leading the pack, though. 
up in the lead of the Super Softs. They're still lined up second, third, fourth, and fifth, but right now, Edwards is like, nah, guys, this track just goes left. I don't know. I'm just going quicker. So he's off to a good start. Separating the slip is huge. He's not getting as good, but imagine what that time gap would be right now if he had someone pulling on him. Like, that wouldn't be going down by, a, what, he lost a tenth, almost two tenths just in top speed. If he was getting slipped, he'd have almost been, like, passed at that point. But we do see Piper and Austin battling door-to-door -door right there. Now front to back as they go through. Denter keeping right in there and Schaller keeping right up there as well. Now the real question is, is how aggressive do any of these guys want to be? Are they okay with just following in a line like this and hoping other people make a mistake? Or do they trust themselves to keep it clean? It is tough to follow in dirty air for 13 straight laps. But Edwards doesn't have to worry about dirty air. He's just checked out and taken off into the lead as we see... Back here, we have Graham making his way into the lead of this medium tire bunch. Tomkinson trying to battle in. We see Liam trying to get back in in Meyer, so Liam's found his way back past everyone back here. As Rob's dropped back down to 11th, so either a little bit of a spin or just bad angles into corners and keep getting advantage. And then, But we actually have Ash getting back past Liam. Now he's going to be battling, and this is exactly what I was talking about. Myers is kind of slowing down the medium group in segments of like two so we've got currently uh graham and tomkinson just battling but at the same time they are still separating from myers who's being battled by the rest of the medium pack currently and then back here we've got thomas rossi and conrad all keeping it very close with each other as we've got some mediums and super softs mixed up with each other so I'm sure they're having a fantastic battle as Thomas goes a little wide. That's going to open the door for Rossi. He says, thanks, I'll take that. Gets the move completed as Thomas is going to come back. It's a tough corner to come out. Yeah, I'd probably just follow. And Connor is just kind of sitting back there waiting. He doesn't need to make a move yet. We see Clements, who's sitting solid in 8th position in the, pole, in the uh, total standing, sitting in 12th currently, so... He's definitely going to want to move up in front if he's trying to uh, gain up. But it is a mediums race, so you're not necessarily always going to be able to finish in the top in the mediums. you got your super softs coming, but McEwen, who's sitting sixth, currently battling, trying to stay inside the top ten, getting battled by 11th and 10th right now. Ash has kind of checked away as well as we see Tomkinson and Rotary going as we've lost them. Where did... Uh... Oh, there's Myers. So Myers has fallen back down. So now he's in this group, which is going to be better for the people who are trying to pass him because they've gotten by him. But there are little gaps as we see. It looks like slips in those three. Liam's kind of a little bit out of it, maybe. As it looks like he's kind of in a little bit of a no land, but he's got a lot of pressure behind him trying to catch him down. Back into the super soft. We've got Denter who's fallen back. Schaller took advantage of that, moved up. Austin still just chilling, following Piper. Which will mean not much in the standings. They're not teammates, but I'm sure he'd like to pass him eventually here. As, you know, I wonder if Graham is managing the gap or if everybody else has started to kind of figure out. It looks like everyone else has started to figure out how to get in those tens. Because we've got Austin in the tens, or Piper in the tens. We've got Austin in the tens. We've got Schaller in the tens that are all. Does Schaller have the fast lap? Oh, just barely doesn't. Oh, oh, that is close. So, I mean, we've got everyone kind of figuring out how to run Edwards' pace, and I wonder if he's realizing now that time's like, well, that time should have kept going up. I was making up like four tenths a lap earlier, and now it's just saying standard, and every time on this straight, that gap starts to come back down towards under a second. So he's really got to take advantage of those uh, corners without the battling as everyone else is putting just a little bit of pressure. Makes people miss those corners by just a bit as we see Ash trying to make the move here on Tompkinson. And there's, that's going to be tough to defend on the outside. Gives him room. I think yeah, he's just going to fall in and let him through. Graham working his way up as well. They've started to line up on the mediums now as we see Myers trying to make his way back up in here as he's getting pressure from behind but trying to catch back up to Clements. Clement's having a good race here, too. Trying to watch this battle. I'm sure he's hoping for this battle in front of him to continue as we do see him start to go side by side as they are catching each other up. Tompkinson having to go defensive. Ending up getting past anyways, it looked like, as Liam's in there, as Edwards throws it up the outside, makes it done. He's, Liam's going to... Ah, I don't think the outside's going to work. Tompkinson shuts the door. Is he going for a little cutback move? It's a dangerous corner out. They're just lining it up, which is good for Ash. He'd probably love seeing the battling behind him. 
as he's currently in the lead. Oh, he's on Super Soft, so he's catching back up to the Super Soft pack. That is a big gap to catch up. Five seconds and seven laps. He is going to really need to put the foot down. Hope for some mistakes ahead. And they've been racing real clean, just kind of keeping with each other. We do see Piper putting a little bit of a gap there on Austin, getting it up over half a second. So Austin needs to be careful not to lose the slip, because once you lose the slip, it is hard to get it back. Like, ask Piper. He can't seem to quite close it down as Edwards is getting the gap even further so now it's almost up to two seconds as he is consistently getting quicker and everyone else is uh oops going the wrong way yeah it looks like everyone else has kind of started battling a little more as their times have slipped a little bit except shallow's still looking pretty solid here he needs to get by if he could get past austin and piper battling here he's got the pace to uh It'd be tough to catch Graham. Graham's running real fast, but he has the pace to definitely get himself a second place here if he can just kind of keep in there with them. Ash catching back up here is... Oh, no, it's not Ash catching up. It's Tomkinson trying to keep the pressure on the Super Soft, trying to get ahead of any of them that he can, and Graham's all over the back of him. Liam on the back of him, and this is allowing Clemens to get in here as well. Adam's not too far back either. He's just outside of slip. Myers is going to miss the slip as well, but Rossi has the slip on Myers. Thomas has the slip on Rossi, so they'll be pulling each other down real quick, and well, it looks like Connor slipped up just a bit. That's not quite in the slip, so he's going to need to hold his racing line and just go as quick as he can around to try to close that back up. Is Edwards just checking out? He's He just ran the fastest lap, and he's about to run an even faster lap. Is he hot lapping right now? Is he just on a practice session? What is going on with him? He's zoned in. And I think Piper probably about now, you're looking five laps, the gap's just going up and up. You probably start realizing you need to try to just solidify this second place. First is looking way too fast right now. He is really pumping out the time. As we see Austin trying to get through, and if anyone back here thinks they can catch Graham, they need to get by Piper, because if they can go quicker... Although Piper's times are probably getting killed by the fact that he's having to go defensive on so many corners, even just those little bit of not using a full track to even flinch your car to show that you're going to defend can lead to that. As we see, this entire group here still front to back lined up, looking like everyone's still barely holding on to slip, so this is going to be a very quick line of people, but really too far for anyone to make a move, it looks like, as we do see Adams catching up here on the back of... Clements, he will be able to probably make a move, and it looks like Clements is going to go defensive. I said Angle, I was talking about what he's supposed to see there. He is going to try to go around the outside. This is just going to be a tough angle. I don't know if he's going to quite be able to... Oh, he's going to be easy. Maybe not. Yeah, he's not quite going to be able to maintain enough speed. It looks like Clements will have the inside of the next corner if he can just keep the overlap, which he does. And Rob just needs to maintain this gap. If you can make that same run again with the gap being about like this... Yeah, I mean, you'll have him on the next lap and be able to close in the next people, but you just started that run from too far back. As we do see right here, we've got Graham trying to catch up to uh, the back of Tompkinson. Tompkinson just keeping on the back of Ash, which is just letting him slip, which is probably helping. Like, as long as he can do that, it's going to mean it's that much harder for people slipping behind him to pass him because he's got slipstream to defend with. So yeah, as long as he keeps it, it's going to be tough. Graham's going to have to get this battle real close. And Liam slips a little bit back, so no slip for him. He needs them to start battling. His time is starting to run out here. Clements is uh, also not going to get slipped, but is giving slip to Adams. And Adams did keep it a lot closer this time. Still probably not quite close enough. Maybe. He opened up the inside, so Adams could try to take the inside from him on this corner this time. Looked like he's going for the inside again, and he's going to get it done quickly. Just end it and end him and shut the door. He couldn't quite shut the door. He kept too much overlap. But this time, he's going to have the inside of this corner. It's going to be tough to go around the outside for Clemens. So Clemens is going to try. Is he going to be able to keep any speed out there? He is. Just keep the overlap, and you have the inside. You have the inside to two corners in a row because you've got the hairpin coming up. But he couldn't keep the overlap. He shut the door. So Rob is going to go ahead and close that off. Is there any battle as well? Oh, we see Clemens diving into the next corner. Didn't have any overlap. Just backs out of it. Almost like just a threat. Like, I do that sometimes. Pretend like you're going to dive someone. Because if for whatever reason they get scared that you're going to dive them. And they, like, open the door for you. Well, then you can actually just take the corner. Because they open the door for you. So, it's not a terrible move. Just kind of, like, pretend like you're going to make a dive move anyways. And just go for it. Because you're mad you got passed. And if they react and open it, you're allowed to take it at that point. 
And then if they don't, you just stay in the brakes, and yeah, you end up losing a tenth, but whatever. I'd rather lose a tenth out of rage than an entire car length is... I mean, Graham's gonna have to slam into a wall for this gap to come down. Like, this is a drive right here. We've seen these kind of drives before from people, and he is really wanting to work his way up. So this is gonna definitely help him close that gap to Piper here in the first race. And what he really needs to have happen here is Schaller, who definitely has got the pace, Austin's got the pace, and Piper's got the pace to defend it as well. He needs Piper somehow to lose a couple of positions. If Piper was to fall to fourth, and Edwards holds his four-hour lead ahead of him, which he did make a pretty big mistake. He's down under four seconds all of a sudden. It would help him close the gap even more on Piper, as Tomkinson right now is in damage uh, control mode on the mediums and doing a fantastic job of it, really, because this is putting the pressure on Piper and putting the pressure on Edwards that you guys need to get a sixth place when you're on your mediums if you want to keep pace with me, because I'm in sixth right now. So there's a lot of medium drivers that I'm beating. So it's going to be interesting to see how well the super softs, because there's just not as many super soft drivers right now. So when these switch and they're on the mediums, how in the world is Edwards on mediums going to find a way to get past all these drivers on super softs? He's going to have to get past Tomkinson, Liam. He's going to have to get past Graham. He's going to have to get past Adams. And... Well, Myers might be on mediums there, and Clement, so he's going to have a lot of racy people he's going to have to get past while on mediums to keep pace with Tomkinson. So let's not forget that he's also putting pressure on Piper right now by only being a few positions back of him on an entire softer tire. So the worst case scenario for Piper right now would be somehow get passed by these two and somehow Denter get beat by Tomkinson, because then Tomkinson would have only been one position behind him, but I don't think we're going to have that as... Piper really does know how to defend. You don't usually see him giving up two, three, and four positions once everything gets settled down and you can actually go into real defensive routes. When there's seven cars behind you going in 15 different lines, yeah, sometimes you end up on the wrong line and lose three or four positions. But in this position, I would expect Piper to have the advantage. But currently with the paces, we might be able to see Scheller really show off here and show that he's got the paces. He's going to try to throw it around the outside. No one's really been able to do this yet because they have the inside. That wall hurts, and filter right back in. We'll pretend we did not see that. It was just a weird line. But that is going to hurt a lot, as it does let Austin close the gap on him, which is going to reapply the pressure. It's going to... a little bit of a gap, but not a huge gap here, as Edwards is probably happy that they're battling, but it doesn't make much of a difference for him, as he's just checked out. We'll see how it goes. They're going a little different. The gap is getting bigger here as we have Austin literally all over the back. They're on the final lap, so the mediums are relatively close. We'll switch back to Velma in just a second. They're staying super close through here. Graham goes through, doesn't hit a wall, so we'll check him in two seconds. Let's see if they make it through. So it is slipstream distance. It's going to be about group finding a run here if he can find it. We are going to show Adam, or not Adams. We've got Graham here. I don't even know who I'm talking about here. It's Edwards, 100%. Coming across for the win, the first race, congratulations, and we do have Piper going defensive, is there any way Schaller can find any pace, he tries to go outside, photo finish, Piper in second, Scholler in third, Austin in fourth, and Denter the fill-in right here on his super softs, coming across in fifth, great race from him, Tomkinson, let's go ahead and hats off to this if he holds on to a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, Tomkinson, Ash, Liam, and Graham, then Adams, then Clements, Myers, Ross, then Connor ends up getting up into fourth, and Thomas falls down into 15th, so great race from everybody there. What a race from Edwards. I mean, that was just how you, like, you're in third, you need to gain some points, you can't do anything better than first, but bad news is Tomkinson crushed it on the mediums, so you've got your work ahead of you boys on your mediums, but... I mean, you guys can do it. We've seen you do it before. So it definitely a lot of mixing up, a lot of battling here at the top. Currently, Piper and Edwards take a big lead on Tompkinson, but we know they got to race all three races, and we know those medium races are coming. So we'll keep an eye on uh, where they finish on their mediums and when they run them. I don't think they want to run them at the end because everyone being on super softs, you being on mediums, it'd be tough to get up towards the top. But we will get another qualifying going as everyone will have to change out their tires, make sure they've all 
use the tires correctly is the teams have to use tires on one side than the other. You can't use mediums at the same time. You can use super softs at the same time, but you can't use mediums at the same time. So, But yeah, I mean, really, when you look at it, we've got Tomkinson, Piper, and Edwards just in a battle of the century up here at the top of it. But Graham also was in there, so he's looking to find a way to gain some points because he got his mediums done and had a fantastic finish. Adams had a decent finish on his mediums. McEwen had a decent finish on his mediums. So the top six are all looking at ways to try to climb right now. And they've all done a pretty good job. They've set a bar for those uh, other drivers when they go to their mediums. You know you cannot finish below about eight or you're losing out on those people behind you. So when they run their mediums, they're going to have to definitely make sure that they uh, don't just run their mediums and fall in at the back. Is Let's see who's switching over to mediums this race. We've got Austin going to go ahead and pop off his medium, so he'll be done with those. We've got Piper going to use his on this race. Smart. Can't run them when everyone's on the super soft. We've got Group, which is Schaller. Right? Am I wrong? Because, like, I don't have one for Schaller, so you must be filling in for someone. So, he's used his mediums, we'll say here. Uh... Alright, so Liam's on the super sauce. Clement's on the super sauce. Super sauce, super sauce, super sauce. Woo! So, Edwards, where is Edwards? Edwards has got his mediums, okay. I was like, that would be interesting if he isn't running them here. Oh, he's filling in for Sean Cole, I think. So, so that makes sense. So that's here. Or Myers is filling in for Sean Cole. No, because Myers is on here. And still hasn't run his mediums. Going super softs again. So he'll run mediums on the last race. It's going to be interesting here. Because um, now he's going to be on the super softs. And all those people he was just racing on mediums are also going to be on super softs. So... That'll be interesting for sure. And then I think Ross also running the super soft, so he hasn't used his mediums yet either. What about Ash? Is Ash using... Ash is also using super softs. Myers is using super softs again. And where's Connor? And Connor is on the super softs again. This is interesting. The bottom four drivers in the standings are going super softs, super softs, and then mediums in the final race. So that's going to put you super softs against half the field the first race and super softs against half the field the second race. And you just run mediums and they're all on super softs anyways. Pretty, I would say strategically it makes sense. But, I mean, if you don't put any risk in one of these things and find a way to try to get a win, because some of these times, the first race only has five people on Super Softs. That's a guaranteed top five. Sometimes it just might be worth the risk try to get a win in one of them, try to find a way to bat be battling less people. They make a mistake on a rough course or something, you might be able to work your way up. But they'll be the only ones on mediums in the final race, so our top ten racers will have completed their mandatory medium race by the end of this race. So the top 10 in standings will be racing against each other all on super softs in the final race. This is race two, correct. Let me check, we did one, so this one must be two. Yes it is. Liam confirms he also counted to two. As people are getting out of the track and practicing a lot more before earlier, so I wonder if people were looking at some times or if they saw some people, like, that's some of the worst when you practice for a track all week and then you get on the track and you see someone take an angle through a, a corner and they get some separation on you and you're just like, wait, what? How did you, oh, you take the, oh, I didn't know it was a late apex or whatever it may be that they're doing to just get that little bit more time and now everyone's out there like, maybe I can figure that out real quick. You see Thomas going purple. looking to get in those tens and we know those tens are where you need to be so anywhere between 10 5 10 8 is very racy here as we saw that kind of the pace that edwards put down and this is kind of the preview race to see what that last race is going to be like because now we're going to see what tomkinson is going to be able to do on super softs we're going to be able to see what thomas is going to be able to do on super softs you know we'll be able to see 
I can't find anybody else on super softs. Everyone else is on mediums. We can see what Clements is able to do on super softs. And then that'll kind of be able to figure out where they're going to be able to battle, who they're going to battle with, and just how brutal that uh, final third race is going to be. Because there will be a lot of people on the same tire, on the faster tire. I mean, you kind of feel bad here. I don't know why it always defaults to looking at Liam, maybe because he's the host. But he is always on the throttle in the first position. And it just never lets him go. <laughs> it's like half the time he's stuck out. You think you'd get out first every time. You gotta almost feel bad for that. As we see everyone jumping out, let's see if these people in the super softs can get away from the people on the mediums this time so they don't literally have put their entire qualifying on one lap at the very end as they spend an entire race getting by people on tires. Piper stuck behind. Oh, not stuck. That's a great place to be. Piper on the mediums getting pulled by Ash on the super softs would be a fantastic qualifying place but to do that you got to keep all four tires on the track which you know you kept two out of four so i think we're good edwards on the mediums i wonder if he's got the pace on the mediums that he had on the softs he's gonna be able to come out here and just completely separate himself again because that would be impressive denter switching over to the mediums as well we'll see where he ends up battling with the mediums as he was on the softs up in fifth last time so That'll be very fun to watch. We've got Tomkinson being pretty smart here, trying to get some separation. He's on the super softs. He does not want to have a medium car stuck behind him, but there's a medium car behind him, so it's like, shoot, gotta go. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna be stuck behind this guy, so he's off. No wall. Actually, I think he's probably not happy about that exit. If you're keeping it that low on the track, you probably didn't get the full exit, so I wonder if that slowing down to get the separation he did... I wonder if that actually ended up costing him a little bit of exit speed and he's going to lose some speed down here. As we saw Myers hitting. I don't think he did. He's already at a higher speed than Myers was. So Myers only barely got to 50. He was almost at 54 there, 53 there. So he may have actually got it together. Or we'll end up checking someone else's time and speed as they come down it on this next lap to see if he did lose a little bit of speed. So we see Rossi in here racing with everyone and he's got a little bit of person behind him no one to pull him in front so not the best not the worst Liam in the middle of a sandwich don't want to be where he is but Rob's also into the sandwich too as he's got it so maybe they can all work together looks like Rob's just outside the distance for slip though and Liam's in it so I changed my opinion I think Liam's in a fantastic spot because Graham also isn't in the range of slip so this might be a good spot for him but it's gonna be hard on the next lap because he's going to catch up so much here without being able to make a move. A 10-5, he's good. See ya. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just perfect strategy. You know you got to get one lap. He got that perfect about half a second distance. Pulled all the way up, hit the best lap he could, and checked out. So he's good. As now everyone's got a time to set, that is, I mean, that is just a sign of confidence. You run the lap and you just check out and go into the pits afterwards. Hilarious. That makes me crack. Looks like he's going to come back out, so just canceled out to get out of the uh, group. I keep forgetting that uh, you can actually cancel into the pits and come back out. So, that's smart. I thought he was just, like, completely walking off on lap one. Just, you know, kind of like when you hit a home run in baseball or whatever sports you play in other countries. Um, you just kind of, like, walk it off. Yep, yeah, that was me. I'm done. See ya. I'll be back in, you know, one minute and 26 seconds. I'm going to just chill over here. As we do see him coming around, we see... Uh, you know, Adams is in a similar spot that we saw Liam in last time. He's got that pull. He's got the grip. If he's on a hot lap, this could be dangerous. He might be able to flirt with making it better. This is looking really quick, actually. He might go real fast. Nope, not at all. That line just never comes around. The camera changes like it's about to hit the finish line. It turns out there's like another camera to go. So I'll probably be calling the finishes way too early, way too often there on the uh, just random lapses. <laughs> That's an interesting place. Now we've got... Hmm, that's just an interesting spot to be. He did get by, so that is nice, but I wonder how much time that cost everybody. As we do see... Uh... Oh, wow. I literally thought that Graham was... Uh, Edwards. And I was like, wait, Edwards is in second on mediums? <laughs> what is going on? That is hilarious. So, I mean, the SMM drivers looking like they like to be racy because sitting second here on the softs, they won the last race. 
Are they gonna go back to back? They seem to be teammates since they got the same thing. It was a random BMW. Connor just kind of hanging out, waiting for everyone to go by. I mean, that's safe, but it's only safe because it's ghosting, I think. He may have, without ghosting, I couldn't really see where his car was because camera angles are terrible. He may have been way off the track, so he may have been safe completely. As we see, uh, is Graham going defensive? No, just kind of letting him go around the outside, it looks like. He finna, oh, oh, what am I talking about? It, the qualifying's over, that's why. I was like, what is this? This looks horrible computer driving that's why we do have a couple people still on the lap thomas and clements are still on a lap we've got a couple coming across the finish line now as myers moves up into ninth another one's coming across i can't see who it is Ooh, austin also improving his time into 10th nope that's not austin into 11th that's austin where's thomas and them they're coming around looking super racy up in sixth he looks like just based on the fact that they've passed each other and how he was kind of like off the gas there. I think Thomas may have already messed this lap up and be just content to let Clements go on by because they were the other way, I think, last time, and they were way closer. So Clements going to be able to improve his time. That is a long way to go. He did not improve his time. Qualifiers ended, so Liam... One lap in, sets the hot lap, gets a good spot. Starting on pole, followed closely by one of the SMMs, not Edwards, but Graham. And then, I don't remember who got third, I'll have to see it. Whose car is that? Tomkinson or something? It is Tomkinson. Let's go in third. So, you know, looking really racy on the mediums, but the softs couldn't quite put it down. So we'll see. We know in the race he has a next level kind of ability to kind of get consistent. So... I expect him to be putting insane pressure on Liam and Graham ahead of him. We know Clements has the pace right here with Adams as well, so expect that. But like we saw in the first race, these cars don't quite have any real launch. So mostly just kind of lining up into the first corner as we do see uh, Vulcan trying to get real racy. He was someone, I think it was him who was way inside. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was Myers. Someone was looking to go way inside there, so... They are off lining up here in the front. That's kind of how it always seems to work. As the back starts to go side by side, as Edwards is already, he knows he needs a six. If he wants to compete, he needs a six. Connor taking a very wide angle. He may have had a little help. Those kind of angles don't always come on their own. What is going on with that camera? As we see Tomkinson just kind of settling into third, we see Thomas up here in fifth. Adams all over the back of him, so Thomas is making moves and waves already. Clements, like we said, he's battling up into fourth. I think that may have been where he started, maybe not. Is Edwards already up into eighth, but here's the problem. There are more super soft drivers this race than there were last race. So if you finish first on mediums in race two, you will not, okay, there's not more super softs because there's some back here as well, but technically up here in the front there are, but so you do have more people ahead of you in this situation on your medium. So you got to find your way past two medium drivers and those medium drivers that you need to get by. Well, it's Myers or the super soft drivers. It's Myers and it's Rob Adams. And these aren't slouches. These are going to take a lot of effort if you're going to pass them on the softer tire. And I bet you Rob's not even worried. Like you're not going to pass me on the harder tire. It's just not going to happen. I'm on the softer tire. So it's going to be interesting. He needs to do everything he can. If he can find a way to get into 7th or 6th, he'll negate some of the advantage that Tompkinson had starting the mediums in that first race and kind of just bailing out on the qualifying in the first race battles. So it will be interesting if he can make his way through there. As Tompkinson settled into 3rd, so the reverse of that is if Tompkinson doesn't match him on Super Softs with a win here, well, then all that kind of negates itself and the gaps all change out anyway. So Thompson does still have work ahead of him. He's not leading this race right now as Liam takes the first lap and the second lap all the way around and keeps it good. But Graham doing a... Yes, it is Graham. Graham doing a fantastic job of keeping it close and maintaining that slipstream distance. At the same time, Thompson as well, which is lucky for Graham. If you don't have that slipstream, then Thompson is going to end up passing you. As it looks like they're kind of content with saying, hey... We don't need to deal with each other right now. There are 13 laps here. Let's just get away from this mayhem behind us because they don't have the pace to keep up with us. And then we'll do stuff later. And then, nope, Graham said, I'm just doing that on the straights because that just goes faster. Now it's battle time. Now we're in the corners. Liam lets him kind of through. 
let him take the inside, and that's going to pull him into the clutches of Tompkinson, and that is not where you want to be, and I think Graham's going to like his position here, because if Tompkinson wants to get racy like he a lot of times likes to, and if Liam likes to get defensive like he a lot of times likes to, this is that same situ situation we had last time, where Graham can kind of just separate himself away, or where, Graham, where uh, Graham's doing it this time, but last time it was uh, Edwards who was able to kind of separate himself away as Piper and them battled. So he's kind of found himself in the same situation Edwards was in last race. And if he can keep this pace up and keep them back, this might be one of those deals where we're going to be able to see him go around and take the lead. That'll set Tompkinson back a little bit. And it'll actually, at the same time, be helping his teammate, who has been all over the back here of Ash and Thomas. This is where he wants to be in the slipstream of these super soft drivers if he can get past all these people that would be devastating i mean that would be exactly what it needs here as we've got shower who had a fantastic first race back here battling having a little bit rougher second race piper also fantastic first race having a little bit worse of a second race so current championship points leader sitting in 11 his closest battle finished in sixth on the mediums and his next closest battle is currently in eighth on the mediums, battling for seventh. So Piper's going to need to put that pedal all the way down, try to find a way back into these battles, or he is definitely looking at hemorrhaging that current BTC C lead. Tompkinson still looking right there on the back of McEwen. McEwen still keeping the slip here on uh, Graham, but I hate to say it, Graham looking like he might have more pace. He's purple. He's not even getting slip and he's purple. Grant, purple through the dirty air zone isn't always the best, but if you can keep doing that, you will end up pulling away enough that uh, they won't have slip on you anymore. It's not going to close all the way up here as Tompkinson is all over the back of Liam. Liam doesn't... Oh, does go defensive. Couldn't see it because the angle's terrible. Is Tompkinson... Oh, he's setting up a little switchback, it looks like. And it's just so hard there. The track just wants to pull you off, and then you hit that little bump, and it just slides your whole car. And it's just not really a... It seems like it would be a good passing zone, but the fact is, like, if you have the inside, you have a usual huge advantage because it's the inside to, like, two corners in a row. It's, oh, that is not what Graham wanted to have. He goes way wide, loses all sorts of traction. Now he's going to have dirty tires into this corner, and Liam knows it, so he goes advantage on him. You can't defend with dirty tires. Absolutely, and he's just buying. Now, if those tires start to clean up, and he can defend against Tompkinson. This is playing right into Liam's hands. He's trying to get aggressive here, but his tires probably don't have full grip yet as they should just now be coming back in as he did go off the track. So he should just now be getting full grip again as he's coming down the straight. And now he's got pressure all over the back of him. And Liam is pulling away, but the slip's going to bring him right back in. Oh, it's just inside of it. It's about seven and a half seconds or seven point seven five seconds or so is about where you stop pulling. In a second, it's completely gone. As we see Tompkinson trying to get aggressive, and he does get the inside. We know how good the inside could be, but Graham is having none of it. He comes all the way down and shuts the door on him. He says, we'll wreck before I come all the way across. Liam's still sitting about a half a second up. This is a good place to be, but it's only halfway through the race, so you've got to keep the consistency up. And let's be honest, Rob Adams, who's currently fifth, in the standings is having a great race up and forth. Keep him who's in sixth is doing better than all of us. So really this is just bringing everybody together. It's a bringing everyone together event. Tom is having a fantastic race back here, sitting in sixth on super softs, but he is getting chased down here by Edwards, Ash, and Myers. And I mean, Edwards right now is on a mission on these mediums. I think he knows he needs to try to get into six because he has to know all these cars around him are on super softs. And he is just, all in their grill trying to battle with them so i think he knows he needs to try to find some way to catch up to thomas here thomas running in the 11s graham running in the 11s this is a tricky situation here i mean he could get in there he's just got to be when you're on the harder tire you don't have any room for mistakes so it's really going to come down to him really keeping everything super clean super efficient as he is looking to make the move on myers he's going to get this done he's up into seventh one more position to go to match tomkinson and all he knows is that Tompkinson is not winning this race right now. I'm sure he knows he's not winning it. So he hasn't matched him as he's almost matching him with about half the race to go. Thomas is going to start to see this, but that gap's pretty big. I don't know if it's going to close down. He is running faster times consistently. And Edwards is getting a lot of pressure behind him by two very quick racers all over the back of him. So it's going to be 
very tough. Is there a little contact there? A lot of contact there. As Myers says, I'm coming through. I got the inside. Now Ash is all over the back end. So this is an insane battle. I don't know, would you rather get six to the points or have this battle? I'd maybe rather have the battle, but he probably wants the points, so he's going to have to get it really on now. As we see three wide happening down here, Liam going defensive, Tompkinson going to split the middle, and I have no clue what Graham's plan is out there on the outside. That is not where you want to be. He is going to be on the outside looking in as he quickly goes first to third. That was a, ah, you just, once the first person pins you high and then they go three wide, you're just on the outside and you cannot get down the track. It might be worth it to almost lift and try to do like a huge cut back on them or something, just because that is so far up the track as everybody else is all the way down the track. But now, Tompkins is reminding everyone, like, no, I know how to drive, don't forget, I'll just take both of you in one corner. I've been looking for it. Liam looking to get aggressive on the outside doesn't usually work here. Maybe he's setting up, he is setting up a cut back. He does get the cut back. Oh, it's going to be on the outside of this corner, which is better than the other one with the double apex, but maybe a back-to-back -back cutback move for the inside of the last corner. It's exactly what he's looking for, but not enough exit speed. It's allowing Graham to get all over the back of him. Rob's getting all in here. Clements is in here, so now the entire top five has a chance at the lead as they are all slipstreaming each other. There's not one person inside the top five who does not have slipstream right now, so they are going to go real quick. And right here, if Clements can find a way, he could just keep, like, if they all start separating out, he can just follow and follow and follow. He can get like two, three, four slipstreams in a row into the corner, but they do stay in a line, so he's not going to be able to take advantage of any extra slips separating themselves and close up on anybody. So he's going to have to wait for another one to hope for some battles to happen as they all kept it clean there. We do have Liam sacrificing second, though, to Graham as Graham's making his way back through. Graham has had the best pace, so I think he very much wants this win right now. I mean, everyone wants a win, but I think he knows this is his win. He should not have gotten stuck on the outside of the track on that straight. He could have gone defensive. He could have done a lot of things early that he didn't get done. And so he wants this position back because he won't make that same mistake again, I bet you. But he's going to have to really push. Thompson doesn't let people by. It's very rare to see Thompson giving up two, three, four positions. And right now, when you look in the mirror, there are five positions to give up, so he's got everyone all over the back of him, four to go. Thomas, still getting closed down here. This is the position that, I mean, this is exactly, not exactly. I mean, he would like it to be a little bit closer, but he is bringing that gap down as he's running 11 fours. And Thomas is running about an 11 seven on the last lap. So if he can gain two, three tenths, he's gonna close him down here in the next two, three laps. He has a chance, but you just gotta get that slipstream. He needs like, 0.3 seconds to really give him a confident slipstream as you see an 11.5 and a 12 so he's still bringing it down Liam's still in third just missing the wall it looked like falling more into the clutches of Rob Adams as Graham's going up the inside hard corner to make a move on and he makes it stick keeps it don't go wide here sometimes the aggression and he keeps it together now he's got to go defensive into the hairpin because you know you're getting attacked back there's no way Thompson's not making a move right he does not really get offensive, no move. Tomkinson, I think, feels more confident making the move later. I don't know if you want to push him on the inside here. He's going to be able to defend the double from the inside. It just seems like Tomkinson's best moves are coming on this straight, just getting people on that outside and just being willing to go inside and taking those corners. But, it, I mean, really, it's not worth the battle, maybe. Maybe we're all still here. If I lose too much time, it's going to let everyone close up way too much. So just give him the inside and... Slipstream on in as we see. Yeah, Graham's absolutely going defensive there. Got to keep that overlap, though, so that you can hold the inside. He doesn't keep the overlap. Thompson does make the move back, so going to need to try to get a better exit if we can get back by. But he has been able to find a way by through this infield section, so it'll be very fun to see if he can find a way. We see Tompkins go way wide. He may have even clipped the wall. I guess he didn't clip the wall. There's no way Graham doesn't make a move if he clips the walls. We see Thomas has stabilized the gap right here on Edwards. So Edwards is looking very troublesome to close this gap down. As he's probably going to end up losing some points if he can't find it because Tomkinson has matched him and gotten back into first. Now what he needs is his teammate to step up, push that pedal down to find a way by him because that would just solidify all this for him and being back in position. If he can just get by him, as he does force his way up the inside, but Tomkinson shuts the door. He does not get past now. You've learned how to make the move, and oh, we see Liam all over the back of Graham. I wonder if he's looking to make a move or if he's making to make some bumps, as he is going to get close enough to be able to go one way or the other. Is he trying to close up on Tompkinson here? That's probably what I would do. One lap of pushing. 
Oh, as we see Graham going defensive. If he went defensive, if I was Liam, I'd probably bump into him and just be like, no, no, let's catch him. We'll race on the next lap, but we need to catch up this lap. I mean, he did follow the slip, though. We do see Tomkinson trying to come down. He does apex it quite well. As we see Graham not apex it quite well. It's going to be a little bit of lost time, but not a lot. It is letting Tom or Liam all over the back as we are on the penultimate lap. We've got everyone grouping up. The leaders are... The top four are within a few seconds of each other, 1.1. And then the top five are within two. Thomas has got his gap stabilized, so Edwards hasn't been able to close all the way up to six. So he really is hoping for either a mistake from Thomas or help from his teammate up at the front. We got Myers and Austin all over each other right here, having a fantastic one. Piper, probably not the race he wants as Schaller's applying more pressure, trying to knock him out of the top 10. He's currently the championship leader and he's having to defend his life just to stay inside the top 10 right now. As Schaller's looking up the inside on the penultimate lap, trying to find a way to get himself in the top 10. Connor inside the top 12 right now. Ash falling back to that. Rossi in 14th and Denter on the mediums back in the back. As we do see the leaders coming around, Graham not quite close enough. It's I think this entire lap is about trying to get the gap set up correctly. It's, where did Liam go? Oh no, Liam must have made a mistake on the penultimate lap somewhere. Hit a wall, I would bet. It's just what this track tends to do. Probably clipped a wall because he's just about a wall's clip back of everybody right now. So my guess is he came out of a corner, caught a wall, and that just lost him so much time. Rob now into third. This is a huge position for him as he's closing it up. Graham is making a move here. He wants the inside for the hairpin and Tonkins and says, no. He closes it off. He's going back for it. He just steals it. Oh, I cannot believe Thompson didn't keep it defensive. He's going to have to keep this overlap for the next corner or there's going to be a lot of trouble as he shuts the door back. Oh, how are you going to defend the straight, though? Tomkinson's gotten you twice on the straight now, Graham. Oh, no, Rob pushes through. That's how you defend? You let someone else take him over. So now how are you going to defend against Rob? You haven't actually battled him yet. Four tenths is hard to close up, and a straight is... This is going to be insanity. His teammate's going to go by, so this is what Edwards needed. Two people got by him, so this is going to hurt Tomkinson's battle against Edwards. As we see Graham's going up the inside as he's met clad is going to take back-to-back -back wins race one and two Fall close by Rob Adams in second Tomkinson in third Liam in fourth Clemens in fifth Thomas holds on to sixth. Edwards does get seventh one and sixth, but ends up working out anyways right now Myers with a fantastic eighth keeping Austin back in ninth Schaller trying to hold on to that top ten as it is a tenth eleventh and twelfth right on top of each other as Ash slammed into a wall. He got 13th. And Brian over here in 14th. And then we see Denter coming across the back in 15th. Just back of everyone. What a race. Penultimate lap. We saw two position changes from first to third. We see Rob go from like fifth to second. And congratulations here to Graham. What a, what a race. I mean, just amazing. The Metclad drivers have been out of this world in this race so far. That was hilarious. What is going on there? Oh, what a race. So that technically should mean that that should move Piper down. I think Edwards will be moving up into first. I think Tomkinson's probably going to maintain his position in second. Unless, because of Graham's win, he's somehow finding his way up the board. Adams is going to be separating further from Liam as he did not end up getting past them as he was at the beginning. So that would have been more helpful. But Adams is going to keep pace right there, so he's just going to be just back at Graham. This is just, everything's going crazy here. I don't even know, I don't even know how to work this out. It's all going to come down to this final race, though, so we'll figure it out here. As they'll all be on the Super Softs, so we're going to have Piper on the Super Softs, Tomkinson on the Super Softs, Edwards on the Super Softs, Graham on the Super Softs, Adams on the Super Softs, and McEwen on the Super Softs. Uh, we're going to have Clements on the Super Softs, Austin on the Super Softs, and Thomas on the Super Softs. So we will have a bunch of Super Softs all racing against each other right here. So going to be very important to find a good spot to qualify. That is for sure because we've seen how when you're in the pack and you're in the mayhem, it's not always your fault that your times are getting slowed down. Their times are just getting slowed down, right? You're just in the mayhem. You know, we see like Piper who has the pace to battle with the absolute front of it. Just you can't, you're in the battle and every time it's slowing you down. You're just losing too much time. So 
Absolutely. And I mean, yeah, Tompkins said it was an amazing move right there at the end uh, from Rob. And I mean, really, if you think about it, Graham needed that move more than anyone because Tompkins had owned him down that straight like four laps in a row, just like had no idea how to defend against him. Now, in a drag race, it's a little different, but it just wasn't like, from my point of view, I was, it seemed like Tompkins would probably end up finding a way to get a better exit, use the slip, and beat him to that finish line because it is so far away. But then Adams just saw the opportunity open up and was like, uh uh-uh. uh. This is my second place. And once he gets by, now it's a whole different ball game. Now it's two people you got to get by, and this person's a new person to battle against. And it's just, yeah, fantastic racing from Rob Adams there at the end. Fantastic racing from Graham. Pretty much great racing from everyone there. So we wait for this qualifying to get going. As we basically see the almost entire lobby onto the mediums. got so we've got sharp on the mediums ross on the mediums and shouldn't nathan myers be on mediums as well i believe unless i missed it which is definitely possible yep there it was You know, the best advice I've ever been given about going quicker is, like, if you just take the bendy bits a little faster, you'll be good to go. And his qualifying should get underway any moment now. We'll just hang out and know that I now officially have no idea what's really going on. But there's just no way that Tomkinson, Piper, and Edwards aren't even closer than they were before. As a matter of fact, yeah, because Edwards has just had the race of his, like, just an amazing race. I am calling it right now. He's going to win this race by, like, three seconds. Like, he has just been flying around this track. But we did see the times from everybody else, and everybody else has the ability to run the exact same time, so... Again, I think it comes down to qualifying. I think you really need to make sure that you really try to find a way to do, like, kind of what Liam did last time. Like, I don't need 90 cars around. I just let me find one car that I can come out of that last corner exactly, like, 0.4 seconds behind. Because if I can do that and we can just be full accelerating, I'll just slip you the entire way to the line. And then, boom, I can just check out and that'll be a, a 1, 10, 5. And that's probably good enough to sit close to pole. It'll be interesting to see what pole is this time, because we've seen 110.5s be pretty good, but we've seen people... I think we saw a 110.4, right? So we'll see if anyone can find that. Right here. Like we said, Liam did get out first this time, so it worked for him here. So we see Graham trying to keep pace with him. That's probably not a bad idea if you can. These are both very fast. They've both basically been pole sitters. So, I mean, we got a race winner and a pole sitter sitting there. So, not a bad group to try to get away with and just slipstream with. As we see another group of two right here, Edwards and Schowler. So, don't know if they're going to be able to quite work together. We'll see exactly, but they are the super soft guys. And we do got, I don't know, look at them like a lot of people getting into groups of two. I don't know if Tompkinson's wanting to slip Clements or what was going on there. They both kind of went into a weird line. Piper has got a whole group of people wanting to follow him. So, he's probably like, guys, guys, let's not do this. But, looks like we are, because no one slowed down. So, we all just kind of kept up as Thomas is all over the back of Ash. See, this is... This is one of those weird things where you won't get to benefit enough from slip more often because you're so close right here that you're going to have to go for a move and now there's no slip. So you're getting nothing. And now they're getting slip. So it's like, mm, I don't know. This seems like this would be better for Ash. But even then, they're going to come they're going to come right back at you because they have slip now and they're one inch behind you. And now either they have to lift or we're in a battle and this is not qualifying, this is called racing. You're side by side going into turn one down the straight. 
going, and now you're battling over apexes and stuff. So, don't know if they're going to end up with good laps here. That is racing, not qualifying. So, probably wanted to find a better spot to set up in. But hey, we've all been there. Sometimes, like, you just come around and that's where you are. And, like, I'm not going to give it up because I need my lap. See, Austin of Rob pretty close right here. We'll see if, oh, that was pretty wide. We'll see if he's able to maintain that. But looks like Liam slipped a little. So, right now, we've got Graham leading the group. Liam probably just outside of slip range right now. Clements isn't outside of slip range, though. And this will be our first qualifying lap. So, we know we're looking for those 10 fives range if they're gonna hold up as these as they do have like you know what two more laps to go probably one more lap to go so long way to that finish line you would think it'd be here but it's not it's like way down there so this is gonna be in the 11s even liam just off of that it was piper jumping up into the low high tens you got ash at the 12s thomas at the 13s yeah but you guys were fighting each other so of course rossi at the 13s Myers with a decent little run there at the 12-9. Denter, 11-5, looking racy from Denter. Someone likes the super softs. Edwards did not get a good time. I do not know what happened on his lap, but a 14 has to be last, right? Yeah, okay, it is. So everyone comes around. Off the bat, Rob Adams is saying, I've got this. Sitting on Paul Piper, just four hundredths behind him. Graham a tenth behind that. Liam sitting in fourth. And, you know, right now, currently, we've got our leaders, who are probably our leaders of Edwards and Tompkinson, sitting way down the orders in sixth and fifteenth currently. And Piper, who is, there's just no way, hasn't been passed by everybody so far, is sitting in second. Now, he did kind of get wrecked there. I don't know what's going on there. That's probably not a good idea. Only has the one lap to go, so didn't have time to go all the way around. So just went back, started it over, tried again. No clue what rules are about driving backwards on the track. I have a feeling it's not allowed, so... And to be fair, I don't think... Oh, Edwards goes last to first in a hurry. I don't think you end up getting... I don't think you get your speed up anyways. Like, you kind of, like, reverse and you got back and you didn't really hit it all with flow, so... We'll see if this works out for Piper. I think he should have probably said I'm okay with my time. A 10-9 is not horrible. Spinning ruined it all for sure. It's interesting. I don't know what the ruling on that is. Driving backwards on a track, some, it's not that big a deal because ghosting is on. And, like, you're ghosted, so who cares? And some are like, yeah, but if it wasn't ghosting, then we've got to be blah, blah, blah. And it's like, who knows? It doesn't matter. We'll see if it works for him. My guess is he doesn't get up to speed anyways, and it doesn't even make a difference. Tomkinson needs this lap to get better, though. He can't be running another 11, or he's going to be very far down in the thick of things, needing to battle his way up. So he sees that his two immediate battles are up there, and he comes across, and this is, he's going to get full? No, he is into the 11s again, and that is not going to cut it to move up the list. So Tomkinson, who's probably the current, no, Edwards is probably the actual leader. Tomkinson sitting second, and Piper currently sitting third. But he's way down, so this is, if you think about it, Edwards is just having a fantastic showing and everything's been going his way, but no, it's not, because Rob is flying around the track. Absolutely booming. And wait, that's gonna boot, that's gonna boot Tompkinson even further down as well, as we see Connor improving his time as well, moving up into 12. Anyone coming, who's still left? Oh, it's going to be... Yeah, so I don't think Piper improved. Yeah, I ended up running 11-2, so probably wasn't worth it in the long run. Probably just move off to the pit, I would think. But, I mean, at the same time, like... Yeah, it's the only way to get your lap is to go back and just try the corner again. I just think it's wasted because, like, I don't know. For me, I need, like, a full lap of, like, consistency sometimes to, like, even feel like I'm at pace. So it's tough to get that one around. But we do see Rob taking pole away from Edwards. Austin with an amazing qualifying in third. Piper with a fantastic qualifying in fourth. I think it was fine. He's barely off the lead. Times are great. Then we've got Graham, who was the race winner of the second race. Edwards, the race winner of the third race. All of them in the top five. This might be a mess here. We'll see what goes on. We see someone moving all the way down, trying to get super defensive super quick. 
is it looks like it was Piper moving his way down, trying to defend or get onto the end. I guess you do want to get on this inside line as quick as you can. That outside line tends to get pushed off. And that's exactly what happens. Piper moves in and pushes the outside line off, goes up into third, trying to move his way up into second right off the bat. He knows he can't let Edwards get too far away right off the bat, but Austin says, no, I can keep you back. We've done this before. I've defended plenty of times as I saw Scooby way off, I thought. What was that? I think there had to have been help there. I saw cars all over him. Yeah, I think Tomkinson just got, that's what we were talking about. That's why qualifying was important. I think I saw him get completely wiped out back there. Maybe it was on his own, though, because it was in the background. He may have done it to himself. I'm not saying anyone did it to him, or maybe they did. But, yeah, now that's just what happens. Someone's going to get caught up, and it's not anyone's fault sometimes. Sometimes that's just what happens in racing. Liam also a rough start down here in eighth, needing to find a way up here. Scholler having a great showing in sixth, trying to battle his way to that top five. Rob started on pole, having some issues down in fifth, but it's still a big line. Gotta follow the, uh, yeah, always follow the slipstream. But yes, as soon as it moves back up, stay on that inside line. That was fantastic driving by Rob there. Follow it down, but as soon as they go back up, stay down and just slipstream right on by. Oh, we see Scholler trying to go on the outside. Graham is in the middle of everyone trying to attack him at the same time. Edwards is getting away, but not too much. We do have Piper and Austin keeping it, so we've seen this kind of battling before where the leaders kind of check out and don't battle each other for a while, and everyone behind is trying to battle to catch up, so that just naturally slows that group down. So it's really going to come down to whether Rob and them end up falling back into these battles. As we see Schaller, oh, and Graham. So these are starting to battle here. If Rob can stay away, he could still close that gap up into that group ahead of him for sure and be part of that lead group that's checking out. But... It really kind of sits here as you don't want to fall down too much. We do see Graham making his way through as well. He would like to close up to Rob and set away from the battle group and no longer battle, I'm sure, as well. As we see Shaller wanting to be everyone in that same group, but these long lines, like if you're in eighth, you've got to make your way up, so you're going to have to battle someone. If you're in sixth, you're going to have to battle someone. We do see Shaller getting a good run here on Graham. He's going to get this done before the corner. It's almost done before the breaking zone. It is done before the breaking zone, so that should be very good. It does open up the potential for cutbacks as he runs very wide and does get cut back on for sure. Absolutely, and he goes right back through. So, you know, next time make sure you try to keep it a little bit more on the inside. Don't let yourself get open that much to a cutback, but it's fine. You got him on the next lap. It happens to the best of us. As it looks like most are lining up, Liam always looking racy into the hairpin. It must be his favorite corner to make moves into, because every time we check him and we're going into this hairpin, he is trying to get side by side with someone. And he does. Moves up into seventh, so looking for Shaller in front of him. He's trying to find that way into the top five. He knows that, you know, Adams isn't that far in front of him. He can catch that up, and that's his direct battle. And everything he does is going to help uh, try to, you know, get a bigger group from Clements, who's also trying to chase him down the point standings and is currently right behind him chasing him down. So we'll have to see how that works out. And Edward's still getting hunted down here in the lead. He cannot get away from that slipstream. Piper and them not quite close enough to stay to one side when they go back up, wanting to stay on the racing line. So they all follow. Getting a little, nope, we're looking like we all come into that apex, keeping pace. And yeah, on to another day, just kind of keeping it as close as we can. Robson in a little bit of a no man's land. No one pushing him too hard from behind, but also needing to somehow find a way to close up. And when you don't have slipstream, it's hard to close gaps on people that are slipstreaming. Same sitting here with Edwards. Edwards doesn't actually have any slipstream. Am I calling you the right person? I'm not. That's Graham. Graham doesn't actually have any slipstream. So again, hard to catch up, but you're getting caught up to by the slipstreamers behind you. So... The real question is, is will they all work together with you to help you catch the next group when they catch you up, or is it just going to turn into a mayhem battle, and that's like where the line in the sand's drawn of you can't go any further than this position because this is the position we start battling at. Piper all over the back here. He, I don't know if he's trying to make a move right now or if he's going to try to help push him down to catch up even more. Nope, going up the outside if they stay inside. He's going to slingshot this easily, I think. No, that Mazda has a lot of... Oh, it may have been Edward sharing some slipstream amongst them so that they pull each other. But no, Piper does get it done and closes it all the way up on Edward, so that may not have worked out. 
Another good tip is when people go side by side behind you, make sure you kind of like give half slipstream, like don't give anybody preference or anything like that because then you can keep them from passing each other because you can keep pulling them into each other. And then when you go into the corner, they'll be side by side. It's, oh no, Edwards, keep it together. It's all good. That corner is a dangerous one too. To go off there and not spin and not lose just insane time is aggressive. It means you're staying in that throttle and at the same time, you're just trying to get back on the track and those things usually cause spins. Usually you have to either let off the gas or drive in a straight line on the, ga on the grass. Um, but he does get back on, keeps battling the lead. Piper is all over the back, Austin all over the back there. Rob still didn't close up that two seconds, and Graham's trying to close up, and Graham might just, I think Graham is in that slip distance, so he's going to start really bringing that time down now as we see it start to close into the seven-tenth range. It was nine-tenths when they came out of that corner, and now it's starting to stabilize as he's starting to get to his max speed. He's only a couple miles an hour faster. He's about two, one, two miles an hour faster than him, so does have a lot of speed in a straight line there in that BMW. We see Liam getting pressured from behind by Scholler. Thomas and them are in an absolute battle. Thomas going, it looked like going defensive. I think he had the lead, so I think he was making sure he didn't get past, but it ended up opening the corner up. Still has the inside of this corner, so he should be good, and it looks like he is. Liam still leading Schaller. As we see Conrad and Placenta in the BMWs looking super fresh running together. Tomkinson back into 12th. He has the ability still, half the race to go. This is a recovery race for the ages if he can find his way into like the top seven, top eight range. Cause like not only did he fall off early and lose all slipstream there was, but he fell way off early. Um, so to be back in the battle is impressive. He wanted that move there. He did not want to be behind him any longer, but I mean, he has caught back up to him, and I mean, he still has half the race to go, and he's already by a few people. He's got a few more to go right here in front of him. He can literally see the leader on the straight, which, I mean, let's just go and say he's not catching the leader. There's just no way he has. I mean, that would be insane. But he can see eighth is in the corner ahead of him that they're, like, all slipping on. He could literally see top eight right here, and that would be an amazing recovery for him as we see all this battling in the back as he's just trying to make his way through them, and... They're not back markers. They absolutely are full out battling against him. So he's going to have to work his way through there impressively as there is just battle upon battle upon battle in front of him. And as fun as it may be, I mean, it's not where he wants to be. So he's going to have to work his way through as we do see Clements up here with a little bit of gap. And oh, we've got Schaller all over the back of Liam, giving Liam all sorts of car to look at, just making it huge in the mirror. Graham doing the exact same thing to Rob. Are they working together to try to close this gap up as they have closed up to each other? As we do see the gap's only a second. I think they are working. I think everybody's like, no, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. And there's just nothing up here at the front Edwards can realistically do other than come down the straight, go defensive, and hope no one makes the move on him. And they are just kind of content to uh, keep it the way it is. Piper's taking him all the way down the track here. This is going to slow him up a lot. And then they run it way wide. Austin ends up on the inside. He's going to get Piper done. Is he going to be able to catch it up here to Edwards? No. Edwards ends up getting the most out of this. But yeah, that was almost three tenths slower taking that super defensive line against Piper. This line is very bad. Piper almost took the death of the wall there. Did you see that? You hit that wall in the wrong spot, it'll straight drop you from a dead speed right there. So he's very lucky that that didn't catch his car and just kill it. But he stays in the battle. Sometimes you gotta be lucky. You can't be lucky if you're not good. As we see, oh, he's going a little wide, trying to open the door up a little bit for Austin. But there's not quite enough room to get in there. So we see Edwards locking it down again. Does he, he does have a really close gap, but he is separate. He gets the better exit. That's a big thing to do because that gap will come down because of the slipstream. But if you can get the better exit, it'll gain for a little bit, which will actually let you go defensive. As we see, what is the point of this viewpoint, by the way? Uh, as we see him going somewhat defensive. I wonder if that was defensive or just trying to break slipstream. If it was breaking slipstream, he should have weaved more. As we do see him end up on the inside, Austin's filtering back in. Piper getting hounded by Graham here all over the back of him. Rob hounding him. So this top five fight is fully breaking out now with about four to go. 
Liam and Shal are all over each other still. Wonder if they're working together or about to give up on that and start fighting. We see Liam on purple on lap 9, so he's flying. Which means most likely Showler also just saw purple as well. He at least saw blue, so he knows they're going quick. So we do see battling up ahead as it looks like they're going to go three wide back here. Edwards goes ahead and checks out as it looks like Pipers gets the inside. Graham trying on the outside, and he's going to end up getting taken advantage of. That's what happens if you're on the outside. The person behind you is going to take that inside away from you as well. It's a tough place to be. It's always how you lose two. Once you give up the inside to one, the other person takes it away as well, and it can get real tough real fast to get those positions back. But around they go, and Graham's on the back. we still got four laps to go as they come across here. It's interesting how we see Edwards go less defensive against Austin than he does when he goes against Piper, knowing Piper will take it all the way down the track if he has to. Piper will do anything for a pass. So it's interesting to see him defending against one person versus the other. So he clearly has, you know, like a knowledge of how people tend to drive as he is giving two different defenses depending on who he's racing against there. As we see this battle that Piper stuck in is going to cost him a lot trying to catch up to the lead here as that one move that he ended up making got him by, but now he's stuck in this battle. He's going to have to go defensive again into the hairpin. Not full defensive. He did leave it a little bit open, just kind of trusting they wouldn't make the dive move. But when you do that, you do kind of end up with this little cutback maneuver. Is Rob going to go double cutback style on him? Can't quite do anything. You can't really do much out of that corner. It's all about keeping the distance right for this one so that you don't make any mistakes going in here as he literally is just on the back there's no way piper can defend this he's on the back of him as he does end up getting the inside we see graham trying to decide who do you pick who do you pick he goes wide to start stays wide graham's just wanting to follow the faster of the two cars through because he doesn't need it so i'd say stay stay high and then cut down on the inside late and follow through but we do see piper actually go defensive all the way down the track for it this is where Graham's going to end up maybe getting two positions for one if he can find the right line because he should have more speed. It should be costing them tons of time, but he doesn't. He gets the door shut, so now he just ends up all over the back of them. As we see Austin all over the back up here as well, there's battles for first and second and third, fourth and fifth, then sixth and seventh are two by two. In the background, we see Liam going way wide. Oh, and he comes across. Is Shower going to find a move as he ends up shutting the door on him? He does stay defensive, but this is going to be those dirty tires, but the dirty tires on the inside. Oh, he can't quite get the car to rotate as it just wants to slide. And Schaller gets by Liam. Liam's falling down to seven, so that's not good for him. Piper's still holding on. Rob all over the back of him. Piper, was that a defensive move or just kind of a little loss of car control? Because that is going to lose some time as Rob is all over the back. Where do you go? Inside, you go outside. You know Piper will defend. I would keep pushing him down, 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 just like that. And then I would just go high late and just take all the extra speed. It's like, if you're going to go that defensive, as we see, see less defensive, more defensive. It's the two different styles of it. As we do see Graham trying to push it up the inside there, which is going to give Rob the move on the outside, I think. If he can just keep his pace up, he does keep the speed up. Is there any overlap there from Piper? Who knows, because the camera doesn't like me. Oh, as he shuts the door on him, that is a ballsy move. If he gets clipped there, it's the end of his race. That is insane that he put that all the way on the apex and didn't leave any room there. My heart's palpitating from that. Oh, he wanted third so bad there. As we see Piper already coming back on him, but nope, shuts the door. Graham, just nowhere to go. He's just all, he's just back there like, well, I, everyone just keeps shutting the door everywhere. As we see Rob up into third, he's trying to find positions. Edwards wants to leave this BTCC race with the lead of the championship the way he's been driving. And there's just no way he's not going to if he can keep Austin back for just one more lap as they come around on the penultimate corner. The penultimate lap is ending, starting the final lap. How is he going to defend this? He's just trying to break slip at this point. He's too close. He's too close to break slip. you got to break slip at like six tenths. you got to break slip at like those bigger ones. Even if you break slip, it's just costing you time here. So don't lose too much time trying to break slip. Just play defensive. As we see Rob holding off Piper. Piper trying to force me. There was a three-way contact. That is a sandwich. As we see Graham running it a little wide. Schaller still holding off Liam. We see Austin trying to make a move here. No, we will check you guys in the hairpin as Piper's coming for the same thing. Rob looking at these and Piper gets the job done on the outside. Piper's through into third. That's where he needs to be. He's trying to keep some sort of closeness 
to Edwards, who's trying to run away with it. If somehow Austin could get by Edwards for this final lap, that would mean that they would finish second and, and third with Piper and Edwards, and that would make it even closer. But I think Edwards is just, it's going to be a drag race. This is going to end up being a drag race, it looks like, as he keeps the distance right. He's got two tenths to make up on the straight. Again, Edwards gets the better launch. It's going to maybe be the difference. As we see him going side by side, is there going to be any way he's literally signaling his flashers on? I don't think there's any chance Austin gets by. Piper holds on to third. Graham ends up getting by Rob there at the penal at the end to take on to fourth, but not onto the podium. Rob gets fifth. We have a great race from Schaller who gets sixth, and Liam almost gets passed by Tomkinson in seventh, and Tomkinson gets eighth. Clemenson ninth. Thomas in tenth. Conrad gets passed at the very end by Denter for eleventh. Conrad in 12th, and then Myers is defending against Ash in 14th, Myers in 13th, Ash in 14th, and Rossi cleaning up the end of the race. I don't think I have a voice anymore. As we get to watch him take the anti-victory lap at the end. <laughs> but what a fantastic race in the third race, as this is about how close it was the entire time between those two cars as Edwards is most definitely going to be in the lead of the BTCC after this. And just what a fantastic race. I told you he was going to win. I just thought it was going to be like two or three seconds, not two or three tenths. What a race. Congratulations. Just really showed up to race this week from Grr Edwards every time. This is the best part, watching the screen with the cars everywhere. But that is it for the BTCC SBR Season 11, Round 10, 11, and 12 here at the Blue Moon Bay Speedway in Field A. Thank you guys all for joining us. As always, we'll be back next week. If you enjoyed what you had, drop a subscribe, like, all that stupid stuff people say. I, uh, you can find SBR if you're interested in them on Facebook, Instagram, and obviously right here on YouTube. So thank you guys for joining us. I've been Jerry. It's been a fantastic time, and we'll see you guys next week.